No. You're not responsible. Who is responsible? The people that I trusted to run it, and then maybe the people they trusted. Can you need? I worked with Mr. Hinton for 52 years, and I would trust him with my life. Um, are you satisfied that the cash payments that were made by the news corporation companies to informants for stories were registered with appropriate tax authorities? I don't know anything about that. Uh, perhaps if people were given money, to answer, story, I, if people were given money in order to accomplish stories, people were given money to in order to get stories. Was, was that, did, did you notify the appropriate tax authorities about this? All of our financial, all of our financial affairs and uh, uh, are, as a public company uh, are, um, are transparent, are audited, um, are the tax jurisdictions that the company works in all around the world are worked with okay. transparently and thoroughly. Um, tax compliance is a is an important uh, is an important priority for any for any uh, business and, uh, and we comply uh, and the company complies with the laws. Somali Islamists maintain aid ban and deny famine. Somalia's Al Shahab Islamists have denied lifting their ban on some Western aid agencies and say UN reports on famine are sheer propaganda. The UN on Wednesday said the parts of Somalia were suffering a famine after the worst drought in 60 years. A spokesman for Al Shahab which has ties to Al-Qaeda and controls much of the country, accused the banned groups of being political. But the UN insists famine exists and it will continue its aid efforts. Most Western aid agencies quit Somalia in 2009 following Al-Shahab threats, though some say they have managed to continue operating through local partners. Some 10 million people are said to need food across East Africa, but Somalia is by far the worst affected country, as there is no national government to coordinate aid after two decades of fighting. Thousands of people are fleeing areas under Al-Shahab control to camps set up in areas of capital control by the weak interim government, which is battling the Islamist insurgents. The UN World Food Program, WFP, was one of those banned. It says it's planning to airlift food into the capital, Mogadishu, in the coming days to help thousands of malnourished children who face starvation in the country. Actors of the conflict, and I appeal to the international community as a whole, to concentrate, to consider that uh, as something that needs to be done, to overcome the obstacles, the difficulties, the security concerns, to make sure that these people can find relief where they are. Because to force them to walk for 10, 15, 20 days, uh, seeing members of their family die on the way, and coming here in such desperate circumstances, is, also, is something that breaks our heart. NASA selects four universities for a 2012 XHAB Innovation Challenge. NASA has selected four universities to design habitat and science concepts that could be used by future deep space explorers. The teams will participate in the second exploration, Habitat XHAB, Academic Innovation Challenge led by NASA and National Space Grant Foundation. The teams are from Oklahoma State University, University of Maryland, College Park, Ohio State University, and University of Bridgeport. The undergraduate students will design, manufacture, assemble, and test their concepts and hardware. This is an amazing opportunity for students to get hands-on experience in fields ranging from engineering and science to business management said Doug Craig, Strategic Analysis Manager for Analog Systems at NASA headquarters in Washington. Last year's competition proved to be intense, demonstrating the creativity, dedication and technical excellence of the team members. US and Canada heat wave worsens in eastern regions. A grueling heat wave has intensified over eastern parts of the US and Canada with Friday expected to be the region's hottest day yet. Temperatures feel as high as 46 degrees centigrade or 115 degrees Fahrenheit. 
It places along the crowded east coast with no relief expected until after the weekend. At least 22 deaths have been blamed on the heat, and 223 heat records have been breached across the U.S. alone. As much as 45% of the U.S. population was under a heat advisory, officials said. Meteorologists have put the temperatures down to a dome of high pressure in the atmosphere. Many regions in the U.S. and parts of the eastern seaboard have been heat indexes, a combination of temperature and humidity topping 43 degrees centigrade. In New York, though the residents were warned to stay out of the water at city beaches after sewage was pumped into the Hudson River. BJP put pressure on anti-corruption judge. India's main opposition, BJP, wanted the Karnataka chief minister's name dropped as key suspect in a report on illegal mining, a former judge told the BBC. Judge Sandosh Hagde, the state's anti-corruption chief, said he refused to bow down to pressure from Dhananjay Kumar, a former BJP cabinet minister. Mr. Kumar admits meeting Justice Hagde but denies asking him to omit BJP Chief Minister B.S. Yadirapa's name from the list. Mr. Yadirapa denies profiting from illegal mining. So far, they have not submitted the report, he told Times Now Channel in Mauritius, where he is on a holiday. So many things may be media speculation. Justice Hagde says the alleged mining scam cost the state dollars 400 million. He says the other members of the state's Bharatiya Janata Party, BJP government, as well as politicians from the Congress and Janata Dal Secular parties also profited from illegal mining. Illegal mining has allegedly been rife for years in Karnataka. It produces 45 million tons of iron ore a year and exports more than half of it to China. Dhananjay Kumar came to my house and asked me not to name the chief minister in the report. Justice Hagde told BBC Hindi Service. I laughed. I said no pressure would work on me. Mr. Kumar admitted that he and other party leaders had met the judge but said that at no point did he try to raise the issue of illegal mining. He challenged the judge to prove his allegation. Nepal landslide killed Dutch trucker and 11 others. A Dutch trucker has been killed by a landslide in Nepal. Another trucker and their guide were injured in the landslide in Langtang region, northwest of Kathmandu. The Dutchman is the 12th person to die this week in a series of landslides in the mountainous nation, officials say. In one incident, a girl of 17 was killed when her home was buried in debris outside the capital, AFP news agency reported. Heavy monsoon rains trigger landslides every year in Nepal. We'll move on to the business world. Greece aid package boosts stock markets. Shares have risen following the Eurozone's agreement designed to resolve the Greek debt crisis. UK and French markets gained more than 1% in the morning trading before slipping slightly, while Japan's Nikkei closed a 1.2% US stocks opened flat. Eurozone leaders agreed a new package worth 109 billion euros, that means dollars 155 billion. Private lenders will also be asked to contribute and as a result, the Fitch rating agency said it would consider Greece in restricted default. German Chancellor Angela Merkel hailed the accord and said it was her country's duty to support the single European currency. It's our historical duty to support the euro, Mrs. Merkel said. The euro is good for us. The euro is part of Germany's economic success. And Europe without the euro is unthinkable. Banking shares continue to rise after Thursday's sharp gains with France's Credit Agricole and UK's Royal Bank of Scotland and Barclays all up more than 3%. Welcome to the world of science. Male circumcision curbs spread of HIV. 
Three years after the voluntary medical male circumcision MC campaign rolled out in the Orange Farm Township in South Africa, the first real-world results are available showing a marked reduction of HIV acquisition among circumcised adult men with a 55% lower HIV prevalence among circumcised men compared to their uncircumcised counterparts. An overall reduction in HIV incidence among men 15 to 34 years old of 76 percentage. Earlier, randomized control studies have shown medical male circumcision to reduce the risk of men acquiring HIV through vaginal sex by up to 60 percent. It's rare indeed for on-the-ground implementation of an intervention to yield even greater efficacy than was measured in a randomized clinical trial. The ANR's 12126 trial involves 1,10,000 adults and shows MC rollout is effective at the community level in curbing the spread of HIV. The free service was offered to all willing male residents 16 years of age and older. And in sports! Mohammed bin Hammam expects FIFA to find him guilty. Suspended former FIFA presidential candidate Mohammed bin Hammam believes he is likely to be found guilty of bribery allegations. FIFA's ethics committee has begun a two-day hearing to rule on claims the Qatari tried to bribe Caribbean delegates to vote for him as president. It seems likely that FIFA has already made its decision weeks ago, he wrote in a blog. None of us should be surprised if a guilty verdict is returned. Bin Hammam 62 pulled out of the presidential race in the wake of the allegations and was provisionally suspected on 29th of May. He continued, I want all of you to know that my legal team and I remain confident that the case and the evidence presented against me are weak and unsubstantiated. They are flimsy and will not stand up to the scrutiny in the court of law that has been cleared throughout this process and it remains to be so. If we believe earlier press statements made by or on behalf of FIFA officials or those working for them, then despite the weakness of the case against me, I am not confident that the hearing will be conducted in a manner any of us would like. Following the events since my suspension, it now seems impossible for them to say that they were wrong, although I wish they would have the courage to correct their mistakes. Rest assured, though, that justice will eventually prevail, whether though the FIFA Ethics Committee, the Court of Arbitration of Sport, or if necessary, through other courts or legal proceedings in courts, where we will be equal and no special privilege will be granted to either party. And before we close today's bulletin of news analysis, let's have a recap of the main points. And there we end today's bulletin of news analysis. Be with us in the coming weeks too. Thank you.